Turn your swords to their sheaths, dispel your magic spells, unstring your bows. There's far more important business. Blood bowl! Yes! And our welcome goes out to all of you. Once again, your humble servants are here to bring you the match, live from the ground. Apparently, the coach isn't too sure about the outcome. He knows it's going to be a massacre. He just doesn't know how many players he'll have left at the end of the match. The players are ready. It's a catch! Now this player just needs to survive! Dodge that one. Look over there. Some cute little elf beauties are selling big moot sandwiches in the stands. Hey, I'm off to get one. I'll be back in five minutes. And so now you like big moot sandwiches? Ah, no way. A little elf beauty? Yeah. I can tell you straight, that hurts. <laughs> Did you hear about the evil gits? The team that is made up of the mix of evil players? Their fans won the most evil supporters of the year award. Fully merited from what I've seen. That face job is a lot cheaper than a plastic surgeon. I don't know if he planned it, but it won't do him any harm in the looks department. Reminds me of when I took Griff to bits in the 91 final against Reitland. Oh, yeah. You kneecapped him. If he hit him any harder, he'd have punched him straight into the infirmary. Ah, uh, don't worry. That's where he'll be waking up.
Doping is really endemic in this sport. Isn't it written into the game rules? <clears throat> Looks like there was some bad blood between those two, eh, Bob? Yeah, Jim. Something to do with swapped body parts. One way to look at things. He did him with the old, you look that way, I go the other. That's a technical term. It's in the handbook. The referee's guild has decided to hire a bodyguard for each game. Another brilliant idea. And just how effective will one bodyguard be against a stadium full of supporters? True. Could be a bit one-sided. This player does all the talking with the fists. And they clearly know how to get heard. He made picking that ball up look easy. Check that move. Made him look stupid to me. Did you know the Nurgle Rodders went missing in the Sea of Ice in 88? That's right, Bob. They drifted for years. All the players frozen stiff in huge blocks of ice. Until some local fishermen boarded the vessel and brought it southward. Once defrosted, they were quickly back in business. That's right, Bob. By the time the boat arrived back to shore, the crew had become devoted fans, and the ship's cat transformed into a beast of Nurgle. It looks like nothing can stop the Nurgle's rotters. blood in them? Mm, could be. Or maybe his opponent shouldn't speak that way about the family. <laughs> I think he's singing him a lullaby. Hey, 
Bob, have you ever been to the Great Skull Land? No, Jim, it's a wasteland. No one goes out there, not even the Chaos Dwarfs. Well, I heard a few orcs went there recently. And have they returned ever since? Eh. Uh... Clean take up there, nothing to say. And I don't have any remark to add, my friend. much about that. Full-blooded, but perfectly legal. Did you know the Chaos Dwarfs intend to leave with some new slaves? Oh, really, Jim? Don't they ever have enough of them? Ha! No, Bob! They always need more slaves to play Blood Bowl! Uh, yeah, well, I would like some slaves too, Jim. Sometimes I feel... Yeah, stop right there, Bob. You sound like a lonely cheerleader. Let's see blood be spilled! Poetry in motion. What we'd like to see... More, more often. often. box and gives rather generously. Unsportsmanlike Nurgle teams out there is the Decayed Renegade. Oh, yeah, Jim. And they have a large appetite for foul play. Let's hope for some of that action today, Bob. Indeed, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Did 
you know, Bob, that the Hobgoblins saved Tsar Nagrun? Uh, how did they do that? They're so small and useless and ugly. Indeed, Bob, they are. But when the Orc and Goblin slaves rebelled, the Hobgoblins turned their backs on their brothers and helped the Chaos Dwarfs at the last minute. Oh, I knew those Hobgoblins were unreliable creatures, Jim. Look at them. <laughs> yes, Bob, but ogres aren't so different, you know. What? As soon as he throws his first punch, we know the opponent will be out for lunch. their own team. <laughs> Come on, Jim. That would be even better, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they tried to catch the ball and stand on it at the same time. And fail that ball. Boom! In the face. And then followed by a clean uppercut. Well done. That's what happens when a pro crosses an amateur. Yes. Splodge. Bob. Today's insight comes from Jaime Schnibble, coach and owner of the Goblin Lowdown Rats team. In yesterday's Spike magazine, he said that Blood Bowl was like war. No winners, just survivors. Oh, that's deep. About as deep as his team's position in the rankings. It's pathetic to see a so-called professional doing a thing like that. Amateur! What the first half is over already. It can't be. Yep, they're heading back to the changing rooms. Well, see you in a few minutes, boys. break is coming to a close. Time for the players to get back on the pitch. I can see one trying to hide up in the stands. Uh, don't worry, the fans will throw him back. Three, two, one, bust up! Well, 
Well, that's one with a good reason to go see the apothecary. Yep, looks like he's gonna need a good one. Finally, there's one that lets his biceps do the talking. Yeah, but from his opponent's point of view, it was a short conversation. Hey, Bob, do you remember when the Chaos Dwarfs had trolls on their teams? Oh, of course, Jim, I remember. Good old days back then. But tell me, why don't they have them anymore? I love this story. The Scarface scavengers strapped dynamite and kegs of gunpowder onto the troll, sent him running down into the opposing half, where he detonated himself to the glee of the fans, covering them with bits of troll, causing a huge amount of detestation to the opponents. This tactic has been outlawed by the Blood Bowl regulations crafters, and we haven't seen a single troll on a Chaos Dwarfs team ever since. Oh, I remember that very effective tactic. Now, let's see how much blood they can spill without an explosive troll. Don't forget, they still have bull centaurs and minotaurs. I'm sure it will be a bloodbath, as always. <sighs> They're red hot. A majority of supporters reckon that the League should take measures to prevent the small minority of peaceful fans from watching a match from the Terracids. They've got a point. If they don't want to join in the fun, they might as well stay home and watch it on cable vision. That right hook was worthy of a black orc. You're telling me it'll take a while to get over it. Bet that hurt. Good job his nose got in the way. Yeah, otherwise he'd have got it full in the face. his medicine and he's having a little nap. Ew, here we go, Nurgle style again, Bob. Who can argue with some high-quality infectious foul play, Jim? Indeed, Bob. Sure is funny to see the opposition trying to stay healthy when they play against a Nurgle team. That's true, Jim. I think we're lucky commentating and watching the game from afar, Jim. Children, don't try and do this at home. Remember, these are seasoned professionals. Well, one of them is anyway.
What finesse! What style! What perfection! What a hammer blow! I've heard of teams that have simply disappeared after being abandoned by their supporters. Let's say that some teams who haven't won a match for several years have been tied up by their fans and thrown into rubbish containers. It's the only way to end a downward spiral. Great, that hurts. Poetry in motion. What we'd like to see more, more often. often. Hey, Bob, do you know who Scurfrick Stone Sucker is? Well, no, tell me. Well, Bob, he's one of the Hobgoblin team's best players. But still, he often missed entire games as he struggled to tie his bootlaces up. Ah, those <laughs> stupid things, they always make everything go wrong. Absolutely, Bob, and that's why the fans love to see them play blood ball. getting dangerously close to the end zone. Yep, good pass. The other team didn't keep the eye on the ball. Hold still and then pow, right in the face. This job is a lot cheaper than a plastic surgeon. I don't know if he planned it, but it won't do him any harm in the looks department. Ew, slime balls, diseases, rotting flesh. To some, it's a beautiful sight, Bob. Don't forget the smell, Jim. Ew, really? Thanks for reminding me. I didn't notice that pungent, acrid stench of death and bile. God, there! that wouldn't be coming back in a hurry.
Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle. Why are Nurgle teams always so popular, Bob? Because all their fans are infected, Jim. <laughs> One way to look at things. You're not far from the line now. It smells like a touchdown! Here we go again for another bloodbath. <laughs> he's got a hand to the ball. Yeah, now he's looking around for support. The Blood Bowl annals are littered with the stories of teams who've gone bust with crippling debts. And with the cost of doping and bribery on the rise, the problem won't be going away. <laughs> as soon as he throws his first punch... We know the opponent will be out for lunch! One regulation clobbering. so widespread that the Referees Guild has set up rules concerning where, when, and how one can accept a bribe. Under an agreement signed last season, the clubs are not allowed to offer less than the going rate.
Here we go, Nurgle style again, Bob. Who can argue with some high-quality infectious foul play, Jim? Indeed, Bob. Sure is funny to see the opposition trying to stay healthy when they play against a Nurgle team. That's true, Jim. I think we're lucky commentating and watching the game from afar, Jim. Sleep. Little baby gets his medicine, and he's having a little nap. Boom! In the face, and then followed by a clean uppercut. Well done! He's got the ball! Blood Bowl is reputedly the toughest of all sports. Ah, uh, so they say. But it really only comes down to taking a few hits. Like there was some bad blood between those two, eh, Bob? Yeah, Jim. Something to do with swapped body parts. He checked that move. Made him look stupid to me. He sent him down for a chat with the Astro Granite. That player's taken away on a stretcher. But still alive, I can see the drool. This player does all the talking with the fists. And they clearly know how to get heard. There was a time when the Colleges of Magic hadn't yet ruled on limiting wizard assistance to teams. Who could forget the infamous 2472 Quagmire incident, when rampant spellcasting caused the entire Bright Crusader Stadium to sink into the earth? Nobody could forget that. People were blinded for miles around the stadium. I think he's singing him a lullaby. Ouch! That punch knocked his teeth down his throat. Yes, Jim. That's never a nice sight.
If those big brutes have any intelligence, they'll learn from this defeat that sheer power is not always the key. Oh, true. If they concentrated more on getting the ball than getting the man, it would be a step in the right direction. They must be disappointed. They've got to convert possession into points on the scoreboard. Yeah, they look very pretty passing the ball around, but there's no points for artistic merit. He was the best player out there, but on his own, he could not deliver a win. Yeah, the coach is going to have to strengthen his lineup. During the whole match, they made sure that the opposition kept to their side of the halfway line. Blood Bowl just ain't what it used to be. Nobody doped to the eyeballs. It's just not entertainment. Was the ref watching the same match as us? I mean, I saw several incidents that merited a sending off. Perhaps he was enjoying the spectacle.